Welcome to Conversations with Malik Podcast. We like to thank everyone who listens and watches this show. That's Please right. don't forget to follow us at ConvosWithMalik.com, ConvosWithMalik.com. There you will find all of our social media links. That's right. Check out our Instagram page, Facebook page, all that. Yeah. Our website is about to switch gears a little bit. Y'all going to see some nice new... Uh, Pics and we did a photo shoot. We did a photo shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see the pictures. Yeah, so check us out at Con W Malik, Facebook, um, and, and YouTube conversation with Malik. Mm-hmm. That was that was a nice me you and Mona. That was a nice photo shoot. Yeah, yeah, that was dope. Dope day down mm-hmm. in Dumbo in Brooklyn. A little cold, but you know we made it. Yeah, well, it was one of like the first cold days. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was very cold. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> it was very cold that day, but um. But no, it was, it was it was it was a great day, and, and listen, you know, here on this show, we we have people on, we bring people on. We believe everybody is a superhero. That's right. Everybody is, you know, everybody's great. That's right. Everybody is an all star. Mm-hmm. Why? Because we have all been through something. We've all had to overcome obstacles to get to where we are. Mm-hmm. So that's not to be taken lightly. Right. You know what I'm saying? And here, I'm here today. We have a guest, and I'm here with Tony Griffin from Griffin Icon. Right? That's right, that's right. Hello, gentlemen. Pleasure to be here. How you doing, man? And good afternoon. How's it going? Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, no appreciate you guys. No mm-hmm. doubt, no doubt. So mm-hmm. listen, talk to me a little bit about Griffin Icon and what you do. Oh, man. Griffin Icon is a company that we actually started uh, pre-pandemic in February. Okay. Uh, it was going to be based upon, um, prior to that, I was doing other things as far as promoting, but mainly comedy. So I was filming some of the projects. Okay. Over the years, we've had other people do it, so I decided why not have it in-house. Gotcha. So Griffin Icon was uh, a concept that I was going to bring people who did film work and did other things. They would all be in-house and part of the company. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's how we formulated it. And we do the editing, we do the filming, everything ourselves. Really? So we did a show uh, recently, uh, well, in February. Went well. We filmed everything. We got ready to edit. We were ready to do another show. Mother's Day, of course. And of course, COVID shut down everything. Yeah. But we ended up pivoting, uh, took a step back, looked over everything, mm-hmm. and we came up with um, another way to do it. We started doing it via Zoom. Nice. So we have multiple shows that we have currently right now. How? Via Zoom. How do you do shows via Zoom? We have the interviews, or we come up with a concept. Uh, with one of the artists or one of the comedians per se. That's what we really have right now. And they interview a particular person, uh, somebody they've probably had in the past, like we have 112 and um, a couple other people like that, or Chris Spencer a few mm-hmm. times, uh, on one of our shows called The Afternoon Rush. With Rudy Rush. Okay. Rudy Rush used to live here in New York, he used to be the uh, host of the Apollo. Yeah, Rudy yeah, Rush. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So him and Kenny Whitten. Kenny Williams, we call him Uncle Kenny. Uncle Kenny. Mm-hmm. He's that uncle that always get it all wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, his background always changes. <laughs> you don't know yeah. if he's going to meet his pants or his shorts. <laughs> yeah. shirt's going to be on or up. <laughs> so the concept is dope, and it worked that way. Okay. So after we uh, film everything on Zoom, my partner, Alec Turner, he edits everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we also have our own original music. Gotcha. We have our own publishing. Nice. So we add our music. He does his editing, puts his spin on it, puts his magic together, and looks like a regular show. I mean, that's why everybody's doing it now on TV anyway. Right, right, right. But a lot of them is not using the original music, which is always good. Oh, yeah. Because in anything now, I mean, we want to, this is how we start branding ourselves. Oh, yeah. Essentially. And I'm sure with running a production company, I'm sure there's, there's been experiences in the past. That's one of the reasons why you guys probably have, uh, feel as if y'all have enough you know, uh, people that you have relationships with to have individuals on the show um, that has some kind of clout. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Well, also, too, um, I've been in this business since my 20s. Okay. Uh, my background also comes from I worked in corporate at the same time. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So, kind of got the best of both worlds. I got the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Like, I worked for Verizon when it was New York Tele. Oh, okay. And back in the day, all they did was telephone service. Mm-hmm. 
That was it. Yeah, Bell Atlantic or something. Bell Atlantic. New York Tell back then. New York Tell? A long time ago. Oh, damn. <laughs> when I, was I don't remember that. Yeah, that was yeah, a yeah. minute ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was in college and working for them at the same time. Gotcha. So, back then it was just a great job to have, you know. Back yeah. in the day, they said find a job with a union, you know, benefits, right, right. blah, blah, blah. blah. regular MO. That's what we did. Yeah. And then they started to change the company around. They went from New York Tell to Bell Atlantic. Mm -hmm. They started doing... Um, not just, um, they started having internet. And internet became big. And then they started doing, eventually doing TV. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And then they went to files and everything. So I'm looking at everything. And they were kind of like, you know, it wasn't their own original. They were using, you know, kind of, uh, how you say, uh, partnering with other people. Gotcha. To make it happen. And then they started acquiring other companies from the type of partners they were having. So instead of doing, say, direct TV, they created their own brand. Gotcha. When it came to TV. So they own everything. Right. And they keep it in-house. Right. So I saw how the technology was going, and I was building it at every house I went to. So I said, this is the way to do everything. Gotcha. Keep it in-house. It doesn't gotcha. matter how small you are. Right. The fact is, that should be your concept when you're doing something. You start with one part of it, and then you figure out where you want to go with it. And whatever you choose to do, you keep it all in-house as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Right. So... While I learned that from them, I also was promoting. And one of them uh, entertainment companies I had was X-Men Entertainment. Mm -hmm. So we were probably one of the first, back in the day, that was doing the ski trips, had all the comedians. I remember. Around, I remember. You know, I remember. And, you know, we had a thousand people up on a mountain, thousand black people weren't yeah. actually skiing. But we were <laughs> just coming out, just just out and turning, turning up, getting you know, rid having of fun, feelings, having you know. sex. Mm -hmm. well, somebody was having sex. That's sure. <laughs> <laughs> we started a lot of marriages <laughs> and we also broke up a few relationships. <laughs> <too. laughs> That's a fact. A lot of and I remember seeing, I think, when I, when I was reading the questionnaire, when I saw X Men Entertainment, mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys have some flyers out for those ski trips. Oh, yeah. Yeah, back I remember the seeing, I used to see those oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. all around. Cool I had, around. like, some co-workers that actually used to go. They're from Harlem. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm They used to go every Well, my partner's up from the Bronx. Okay, so yeah. you're familiar you. with some of those, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. those oh, folks yeah. out there. Listen, right, so we to... brought a thousand people. They weren't just coming from Queens. They were coming from it's Brooklyn, amazing how Queens, like, Harlem, like the Bronx. Yeah, I, I was looking at X Men. I said, I know this. I've heard this somewhere before. I've heard it. Yeah, and yeah, we, yeah. And when you just said ski trips, that's when that's I realized because I, like, I used to see the flyers. I used to up. see the flyers because I had a female that I used to work with years ago. Because mm -hmm. of course I came from the corporate world too. Right. Somewhere around your background as well. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that later on through the show. Okay. But I remember she used to try to invite me to these ski trips all the time. She never skied. Oh, no. She used to just go up, watch y'all go to hang out, and just go party. hang out. Oh, yeah. Listen, we were doing it for years. Mm -hmm. Over 10, maybe 15 years we were doing it. Wow, okay. that's a nice run. I mean, think, think about it. You're bringing 1,000 people, 400, 500 people, 600 people. The money is great. Mm -hmm. You're having a good time. Yeah. And that's your major event for the year on top of a couple other things that you do. And you're working on top of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, so y'all was coming out pretty good. We in our 20s, 30s, we were doing great. Oh, right? yeah. You know, it was fantastic. Yeah. We would go to, I'm, side, I'm on a sideboard, so we were going to Manhattan. And then Center. I want a couple of stories, so you got to oh, give me a I story or something. Listen, <laughs> I, I, I need to hear some juice. <laughs> <laughs> we would go to Manhattan Center mm -hmm. at the time. And you could rent out Manhattan Center for $10,000. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. not only have the venue, but get the bar as well mm -hmm. and get your one day liquor license okay. and thousand people also mm -hmm. we would pack it out wall to wall and we would drop down to 10 not even give them half of it that's how that's how much money we were making we wasn't thinking about you know right. coming back oh this is what it is we'll pay it now yeah drop it down yeah. do our event and we were ready to roll nice so but we got to meet a lot of great people some people I'm still friends with to this day who I'm very close with. Gotcha. So it's been a fantastic, it was a fantastic ride, great experience. I mm -hmm. met all the comics. J.B. Smooth, Mike Epps, uh, Talent would be usually our feature, right. or yeah. T.K. Kirkland, something like that. Yeah. Will Savance, Tony Roberts. Yeah, oh, I mean, everybody. Drew Frazier, oh, Ruby yes. Rush. Uh -huh. You know, it was so many of them, uh -huh. constantly, all the time. So it was a dope, a dope process. But when you're young, you think this, this is the way it is all the time. Exactly. Yeah. Right, right. This is going to last forever. Exactly. You, don't, you don't know stuff. So <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Give me, give me a crazy story. What's one of the craziest things that ever happened on a ski trip? Oh, my God. There's so probably many, so many. There's so I'm many. I'm sure there's a whole bunch. Listen, yeah. man. Well, which one should I tell? 
I mean, all right. It's not uncommon, but it is uncommon when you go around to a particular room, you know, and you're seeing all your friends or right. saying hello to your guests, whatever, and you happen to walk into a room where everything's happening at the same time. You kind of open the door like, oh, shit, like, maybe I should have knocked before I came in here. Yeah. <laughs> Ass everywhere, guys everywhere, females everywhere, and, I, and I'm the host of the joint, so I'm like, uh, yeah, maybe I should close the door and let them do what they do. Right, 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 right. Because at the time, I was married, right. gotcha. so I can't be doing what they do. Exactly. <laughs> but it was just crazy. And they opened the door, they looking, they smiling, nobody stopped, nobody was stunned, they yeah, kept rolling. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. You know, you know, out there still. Man, man, it is you, what you it is. You get flack for, for throwing those things? Wifey ain't had no problem with you throwing those things? She was with me. Oh, there you go. That's the way you do it. And that's the amazing part. You do too, something like that, you got to bring her with you. Yeah. yeah, that's the good part too, man. It's, it's the fact that, you know, we could, because I saw in the questionnaire, I'm sure that the hustle from working at a nine to five, and having an entrepreneurial mindset, it, it could be a lot, but at the same time to endure some of those amenities from the job mm -hmm. and incorporate it into your your, your business yeah. plan mm -hmm. and your your, your, your your scriptures to right. move up until now, it's a blessing. Because mm -hmm. nobody ever even ever think like that. It, but it goes together. It goes yes, together. It does you go. don't understand. You mm -hmm. can't. You working at a corporate yeah. job. You remember when I had that little stint with MTA? Yeah. Well, I was, I was I was trying out for train operator. Now I'm an entrepreneur, but mm -hmm. I went. I, I, I don't know. Years ago, I put in for it, and they called me like ten years later. <laughs> I was like, Yo, I, was like, I forgot. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm talking literally over ten I years. I believe it. I believe and, it. I was, I was trying out for chain up and I and I run a bus company. So I there was things that I took from those just those two, three months of being in school call mm -hmm. that I took from TA mm -hmm. that I applied to oh, absolutely. my business. And so that's what I say to people that, yo, don't okay, if you're working a nine to five somewhere, that's fine. But take what you've learned from the corporate structure right. apply there, it. apply it, and apply it you have to. in your own thing. Because at some point you start feeling like you're better than the job. When you start doing that, like for instance, you had it in you already because you was already here, right. and you just went to make you, you, you didn't make a backwards move. It just I think I call it a lateral move. Yeah. Because you needed to get something or to get somewhere. So when you do it, you start saying to yourself, "Damn, I'm still here." And I'm making this lateral move. I mean, what sense does it make at this point? I'm sure that's probably how you felt too. You know what it was? I started working there when I was 20. Mm -hmm. And I started promoting when I was 23. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know any different. Right. You know, I wasn't one of those who had the job for 10 years and then got into it. Good. You know, I didn't have like a, how you say, like, you know, a, I was used to this mm -hmm. way of doing things. Yeah. I was young, so it was like, boom. I'm just going to roll it in this the way it's supposed to be. And you're a hustler dude right. with a 9 That's five. I, I had energy. Right. Gotcha. I got married young. I said I need to keep myself out of trouble. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm young. I'm not, a, you know, I'm, not a, I'm not an old guy. Not that they don't, but young guys, we got that energy. You know, where we need to have our mind focused and occupied. So my mind was, look, if I have my salary, I can make this. I can be at a certain stage in my life right. where I can make a decision if I want to stay at my corporate job mm -hmm. or do something else, you know, what I'm currently doing. But then you learn about you make money, you also got to pay taxes. Exactly. You know, you make money, you're responsible for other people, you're responsible for your team making mm -hmm. money also because they're not going to stay with you if nobody's making the money eventually, friendship or not, That's true. Yeah. you know, or is it going to be a hobby or are you really trying to turn it to a business, mm -hmm. like the business that you have at work, you know? They're, they, at one time, probably started as a hobby or as an idea. Mm -hmm. And it turned into something else. No matter how many years ago, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at it that way. Yeah. Where do you really want to be? If I can work six days a week, eight to eight for my job, I can put those same hours in what I do for my business. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no difference. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I saw it. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'm doing it. I like what I'm doing versus well, well in my corporate job. But the corporate job is for the bills, 
It's so for the family. Right. It's for my sons. Mm -hmm. It's that security part of it. But this could relieve all of that if I right. continue doing it. So, 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 you re y'all recreated yourself during COVID. Oh, absolutely. And you're doing things virtually. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it? Does it entail more? Editing, more sophistication of the editing and putting things together. I think what it does, it's a different version of entertainment. So as far as the editing, it's probably, I won't say it's easier, but it's not like you have to go to say camera one, camera two, camera gotcha. three, camera gotcha. four. Because it's all online. Right. It's, gotcha. it's all online. So you're okay. right there cutting it and, and you want to make it look like you do have multiple cameras if, or somewhat. You got to make it look something like it can be on a show right. that's the hard part of it mm -hmm. but when you're live and you, you know you're going to have a camera here a camera there a camera there and then you got to merge all that together that is more work mm -hmm. at the same time what's the what's the name of one of the shows you've done and what it's about all right um i already mentioned the afternoon rush with rudy rush and mm -hmm. kenny williams that's more of uh two guys sitting together they got a great bond together great chemistry mm -hmm. and they're interviewing people that they've had dealings with or people that they know and it's kind of like a relaxed conversation, gotcha. a little bit of fun. You're not poking too much into it. Gotcha. And they're more laughing most of the time than they are doing anything. Gotcha. Else, laughing you know? and joking. Gotcha. You know, it's not, he's not telling jokes. It's just a natural conversation. Gotcha. We also have another show with uh, Doug Williams. Mm -hmm. uh, Doug Williams used to be the host at uh, Stars with um, First Amendment with um, Martin Lawrence. Okay. okay. Used to be the host up there. Now, his is a little bit different. Well, his storyline is people who've had say uh a falling back something that happened to them in life mm -hmm. and they've had to overcome it and bounce back okay so for instance we have one comedian named steve brown i don't know if you remember a few years ago he was in south carolina he got attacked on stage and it went viral I heard about from the that. audience came out yeah, he was and joking on the yeah. guy yeah and um there's a whole backstory to that did, he get, did the guy. guy really hurt him, or was it? He tried to. He, tried to, he yeah. swung the mic at him and missed, and finally wore down and left. But originally, what happened? Why he started with him? Because this guy smacked his girlfriend during the show. So mm. Steve got on him a little bit, and he didn't like it. Mm. So he came after Steve, and if you if you really watch the whole thing, there was no security to stop him. Wow. They finally came around, but he had to kind of fight him off or whatever. Off. Yeah. But he couldn't even really touch him because if he beat his behind, Hold up. where's mm -hmm. he going to work at? Mm -hmm. Hold up. He can't work there no more. Right. Hold up. And then, you know, when you're performing, somebody can sue you. People, yeah. You don't realize yeah. that. All of this, even mm -hmm. if you tackle him, he can still take you to court. That's it's true. just a matter if he, doesn't matter whether he wins or loses, no doubt. he still has the right to take you to court. Mm -hmm. So he was sitting there thinking like, man, I'll be banned from here. Well, I need every gig I can get. Mm -hmm. And then this guy might have to deal with this guy in court. Well, who wants to be bothered with that if you don't have to? Right. Mm -hmm. So it was a whole lot with that. But he told the storyline pretty pretty good. So it worked out well. Okay. Cool, right. cool, cool, cool. Cool. So you're going to continue doing projects the way you're doing it. But then what are the plans for when COVID opens up? Because it looks like the vaccine is coming. We got a new administration in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that is at least acknowledging the fact that COVID is real. Correct. That it's not a hoax. That's right. That it's not something created against them. We have real people in office that their number one priority is this. So in light of that, what are y'all plans about? Well, now that the politics is basically over, because that's really what it was all about. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That guy... Strictly about himself. Oh and yeah, politics. yeah, definitely. No doubt. So his concentration on it was one winning. Gotcha. And we were the sacrificial lambs, so to speak. Right. But he had to win. So now that that's all over with, we got at least the next four years to go forward. Mm -hmm. um, we're already planning to go on the road. Okay. Uh, maybe I want to be say February, but maybe March we can actually start because nice. in these red states, they're still open. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. they're at half capacity. Yeah. So, but they have to follow the guidelines, of course. And we're going to probably end up doing that, taking the comic portion of the comedians. We got eight groups of comics that we have. Okay. So wow. we plan on going through. And just doing like comedy shows. 
and and promoting the actual shows that they are actually doing as well. So doing come on the shows and promoting right. Mm-hmm. Got gotcha. to just build and it. We get into the, the whole, whole merch brand. thing and you know. Oh some, y'all gonna do merch and merch, merch, merch and everybody about merch. Yeah. merch. Yeah. Um, like I said, I've been doing it for years, so that's what the communities do. Whatever merch they have or products they have, mm-hmm. they sell them before and after the show. Yeah, so y'all gonna travel across the country doing this? Yeah, we're gonna go to the main place where we have a connection at. Uh, where we know somebody at, where we can probably do a little radio, okay. and we get a good deal, mm-hmm. obviously, and uh, go from there. We're looking at doing Florida, Georgia, Alabama, okay. um, Texas, nice. Phoenix, and possibly um, California. So all of these comedians are are they like signed to you? Oh, yeah. Or you just yeah. yeah. Everybody we have has a signed deal with Griffin Icon okay. to do material and do shows with Griffin Icon. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. So that's eight comedy comedians that we have who are doing different types of shows. Drew Frazier is another one that we have. Mm-hmm. Catherine Maloney, she's out in, um, she's from actually far Rockaway, but she lives out in um, Tampa. Okay. And um, she's at, she's been out for a while. She's very funny. I think she has a big, big, big future ahead of her, honestly. Mm-hmm. And um, we have other shows that are not comedian like the you know, a little drama. There's some, uh, one lady, uh, Tanya, she has um, a show that basically talks about, um, one of her shows talks about COVID, how it affects black and brown people, how it affected us, and mm-hmm. it's still affecting us. Yeah, it does affect mm-hmm. us differently. Right. And there's a couple who are doing some political shows, things like that. So we're kind of building it slowly as we go along. Okay. But to be honest with you, we started the process in February, but the whole team that I have now, which is a couple more people that I have, we've been together for almost four months, putting all okay. this out. We had our launch virtually October 26th. Okay. So we did a lot of work. A lot of work just getting... But that was, again, based upon relationships. So the team is consisted... Of, of four uh, people. Four people, which is uh, production. Yep, production. Uh, the music production. There's also music production. And, and um, I'm sure, what, add a promo side. Yep, yep. You know, I'm and sure you guys... Uh, financial person that handles the that's correct aspect. that's correct that's Good. correct so it's like a one-man shop yeah for the most part. and that's the way we, that's that was my personal vision to have it that way but again like i said i spoke to people who i've dealt with over the years between the promoting and other aspects who i knew could help provide that mm-hmm. and when i talked about the concept uh, my current partners they loved it they saw it they saw the whole vision so since we started grinding and people start agreeing to our contracts because another thing we actually are on a streaming service right now with our shows called Fly TV okay. now Fly TV has a deal with uh, Amazon Roku Tubi mm-hmm. and Apple where all their content is shown in those formats yeah. so we have our own channel on that oh nice alright so we'll be seeing on all those form- formats nice and um, nice. we also have it where I know the guy. I've known him for a long time. Again, relationships. Relationships. We were talking about right. Relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And I posted something on Facebook. He liked it. And I said, well, let me give him a call. Because yeah. I haven't heard from him. And let me see what he's doing. I know we're in the field, but I, you, know, mm-hmm. you yeah. don't really know until you start talking and see right. the details. Right. And when I called him, he said, yeah, I was praying for you. Wow. That's exactly what he said. Wow, nice. Because he believed in it. He has his own business that he's doing, his own stream of service, but he was like, I need somebody to come in and do certain things and help bring it along and handle this part of it. Wow. So and then you called I him. I called him. Nice. We had this go together, we, and then we just got got together on the business part, how the deal could fit, mm-hmm. and it worked beautifully. So it Dope. was great. A great a great situation. That's, that's what relationships do when you have yeah. relationships with yeah, you'd be surprised that those individuals that have you just had a relationship with and connected with that they need those same services for, for, for you, <laughs> for you. Yeah. So that's usually that's usually how it works. Essentially, mm-hmm. is the plan the long term plan could possibly be to shop to a major production company. Is that the key, or you well, want to just go all independent with this? The great thing about what I'm doing. That's a good and, question, and that's a great question. Getting back to my partner at Fly TV, uh, Marlon, Marlon Greer. Mm-hmm. He gave me such a dope deal okay. that I couldn't say no to it. So mm-hmm. non-exclusive deal. 
Okay, not so, exclusive. Right, I don't have to. What, what is that? What is that? Not exclusive mean? means I'm not stuck with him forever right. throughout the whole contract. Okay. So whatever I make up is on his format, but it could also be on my personal format, like on my website, and that could be on other formats that don't involve great deal. him. So I could take it to say it gives you flexibility. Yes, like okay. UMC, BT, and also be on their format okay. at the same time. Okay. So I offer the people that work with me the same deal, pretty gotcha. much, more or less, because okay. yeah, I think it's a fair deal. You know, it's fair doors, for me. It and opens it, doors for you. Yes. And it opens doors for them. Correct. Simultaneously. That's correct. And when they blow, you blow. That's correct. That's pretty much what it And we're working to together and we're pretty much sharing the money that comes in. Yeah. As it comes in. So that's that's the way I see it. But speaking of BET, those other big networks, the mm -hmm. whole network, I mean, they look for stuff that's already polished already. Mm -hmm. That they really don't have to do no tweaking. Yep. You've been in this business for a while, so you mm -hmm. know how this stuff works. I know exactly. Oh, so you're saying they kind of look for people that that are already the 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 the, uh, the training wheels are off the bike. Right. They know how to right. ride, correct? And then what they can pump some right. dope into them and let them keep riding, exactly. opposed to having to take on. That's how it really. That's how it goes. That's now. It's sort of like taking take you all on and build you up mm -hmm. and all that. Right. It's a little less responsibility for them. Right, because they don't have to babysit you right. the whole way because you've okay. been mm -hmm. pretty much doing a lot of it on your own. So you, they just have to like what you have, and then you have to agree on a deal more or less. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's with all that. That's and music, there's, yep. there's no real such thing now as of artist development. I mean, these companies don't really have time. They rather deal with something that's in place already. Right. If the numbers is right. If the numbers is right independently, can you imagine? Because all you're doing is. They signing you and you you just using their departments. Correct. You know, to build out what you're building out. Have. They have gotcha. the, the higher level departments. You know, I worked in the music industry for many years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you talked about using original music. Yeah, I always say that. I worked at ASCAP. And yep. my my background is music publishing. Right. And once upon a time I used to tell these guys, you know, you guys got something. Why sign it off? You know, you can do these exclusive deals. Like That's right. A lot of these, the powers that be, they're going to approach you to get it all. Mm -hmm. But if they want you that bad, if you have that savviness in you, and of course the attorneys, are, they just looking out for their best interest. Oh, that's right. You That's right. You know what I'm right. saying? You That's sign right. this million dollar deal. That's, I get 35% of that. And think about that. It's a million dollars, but is it really a million dollars? Exactly. By the time you... Because it's got to be cool. Because they'll... You got, you got to record. record. You got to do it. And they'll tell you this. Well, we'll give you a million dollars, but it's going to cost this to do this. It's going to cost this to do that. It's like a loan. Blah, blah, blah. So on and so on. And then we need this and blah, blah, blah. Before and you you're going to spend the money. On the phone. <laughs> right. And it's like the IRS, you know? Yeah. And the IRS comes along by the time you spend the money and say, guess what? You owe me 25% of that. Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Yeah, gotcha. And you yeah. sitting there like, oh, man, nobody told me that part. Right. Yeah. You on your own, you're independent. That's part of it. That's mm -hmm. what you got to do. Right. You so, so, so what are the what are some of the keys that you? Let's just say somebody's watching this show, mm -hmm. young man, woman, they want to get in to this business. What would be your advice to them? My advice to them uh, would be to find somebody in that business that you can work for. Right. Okay, and try to learn from them every day. Learn as much as possible. My also my advice was would be uh, so many independent formats, social media formats, to create something on social media on your own as well, and see how it works that way. Because sometimes you may want to be the star, okay, but maybe that's not your role as you go forward. Maybe your role is on the business side. Maybe your role is on the background side as far as the production. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. You know. Gotcha. Because a lot of people want to be that face. Yeah. But they find out, you know, hey, I got 2,000 follows, but this guy got uh, mm -hmm. a quarter of a million followers. Gotcha. And you're sitting there going, how does he get a quarter of a million followers? Mm -hmm. You know? L listen, another guy, um, God, what is his name? Um, he's a comedian. It's not, I think of his name in a minute. Mm -hmm. But this particular comedian did a couple of movies. And I know because I was there when he's from the beginning. And he only had one major line in the movie, right? But he took that line and made a career out of it. And then he took the social media and he killed it. 
Okay? And this comedian also, all right, he charges, when everything is good, anywhere per weekend, forty to $70,000 to perform. Gotcha. Okay? And you sit there and go, well, this comedian has jokes upon jokes upon jokes upon jokes. And this guy's really got a couple lines, a couple of jokes. He's got the look. And you're going, what's the difference? Because he created himself and okay. made himself made him a, a, made a whole himself a brand. another a brand and a whole another yeah. format yeah. than the other person right. did. Now, he may not be as strong as him joke to joke, right. but guess what? But that ain't the point. That's not the point. It's brand new. Right. And who got more money in their pocket? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, as it's, it's about getting to the bag. Yeah, right. So, so, what would you? What What are some of the being in this business? What are like three of the most important lessons that you've learned? Do the work is the most important thing. Do the work basically means get your butt up and work. Work. Make sure that whatever you do, you don't deviate from that. Stay focused on what you're doing. Don't waste your time. Um, you know, all right, we're doing a party, so while I'm at the party, I'm going to drink, I'm going to hang out. Even at your party, make sure your customers are okay. Make sure your money is right. Make sure there's no problems. Make sure you are connecting with the right people at these functions because people that you have as your guests, they're watching you and you don't know what form of work they do. Mm -hmm. right. You know, so you may know go by right, and say right, hello, say hello make sure, right, make sure. are y'all okay? You need right. anything? Da, 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 right. Be sober. Another most important thing. Gotcha. You know? <laughs> don't be the don't be the, the drunkest like, person at your own party. Be sober. It's business. Listen, we that might be the hardest part. But but we know this, right? <laughs> but we know this, right? Because you we've all went to events, a great event, and the promoter's drunk yeah. at 8 30, 9 o'clock and the door audiences. Right. Right? He's drunk before people start coming in. <laughs> right. Or she, you know, for that for that case. Right. Oh, you know, man. and you're sitting there going, this right. is a great place, this is great, but dag, like This is crazy. But, this is crazy. But that and then also to me what that tells me is if I have an issue, you're not gonna be able to handle it. If an emergency comes up, exactly. This is your party. Emergency sound coming, you can't handle it because you're bent. Mm -hmm. That's part of doing the work. You know? It it is what it is. You gotta make sure before you have fun that the people around you are having a good time and mm -hmm. all the business is done. Uh, whatever props you have, whatever uh, stuff you're doing, make sure all that's taken care of yeah. before everybody mm -hmm. comes in the house. Right. Make sure if you say your doors open at 8, they ready by 8. Mm -hmm. Make sure if you say the show starts at 8, 30, 9 o'clock, it starts at 8, 30, mm -hmm. 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about how many people come in. Right. Don't worry about who gets there early. Because right. after a while, they're going to know this guy means 8 30, 9 o'clock. Right. I'm going to get here. Yeah, don't. Yeah, I've seen people. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. I've been to places and I've seen people because it wasn't that many people there. Let's wait a little while for some more, for more people to come. Right. No, you can't do that because the people that are there, that's right. They might be, they might not plan to stay there. Mm -hmm. That's right. They might be like, yo, we're going to catch the 8 30 show and then we got a, a reservation at so and so exactly. at 11. Now exactly. you sit here, you put them behind. You put them behind. Now you, now, mm -hmm. now you possibly lost customers who's not going to come. You, caught, you, you lost customers that come on time, who pay, mm. okay, in advance probably. Probably brought people or use it as a date <laughs> or a girl's night or whatever for. And if you're late and you wait for the pit, they're like, this guy is. So, you, right, so you're going to lose the on-time customer. Good customers. Yeah. Good customer. Mm -hmm. And make and inconvenience them for the late people. The late people right. exactly. who who aren't always yeah. gonna show up. Aren't always gonna show up, and they probably didn't want to pay full price mm -hmm. in the first place. <laughs> That's why they pay late. Like, see if they can get. Okay. That's a fact. And I don't care how old you are. That's a fact. It's it's true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, now, I'm yeah. a member of Five Bear Sigma fraternity. Okay, you figure. Oh, well, mm -hmm. you got people. Don't be the people coming to my show. Yeah. I love my brothers. Uh, gotcha. I love them. Gotcha. But don't they don't be the ones flood. Yeah. They don't flood my shows like yeah, that yeah, because right. I know them. They know me. That's right. So it's like, yo, Tony G, come on, man. You can't be a prophet to your, in your own land. Right. And you know what it is too, Tony, right. man. It's like you never know who's there, man. You never know who's like yeah, you're an important person know. that's there. I mean, things happen, man. I've seen things happen just. Because 
he was just at the right place at the right time and you carried yourself right and mm-hmm. somebody was watching. Yep. Yep. And that's just how I look at with just anything, even my personal life. Mm-hmm. Like you just never know, you know, when you're trying to especially leaders, we all leaders mm-hmm. that sitting amongst we sit amongst each other. Mm-hmm. So when you're a leader you have to think like that. It's like you gotta think five steps ahead of the normal person. Yeah. Oh, Correct. Uh, Correct. And you gotta constantly do that. It gets redundant, but it's just something that you know you're trying to reach a goal, so you want to keep doing that, keep mm-hmm. doing that. You want to repeat it constantly. Mm-hmm. And that is perfect what you're saying because you should never skip steps. Never. As soon as you start skipping steps, it's got to be a scripture, and you can't. It will. It. You will go backwards in mm-hmm. some way. You mm-hmm. know, even when you don't want to. Right. You and know, I don't like, say I don't think it's backward. I think it's more like you're moving lateral just to move forward again because things yes, happen. But technology like when we did the ski trips things change right like we were making that money for a while but then all of a sudden mm-hmm. that period stopped and right. it changed right. there's a point there was you no, gotta adjust, there was no more hand to hand flyers anymore right. Right. it was how we were just going to club hand to hand fly flyers in your departments that changed that mm-hmm. world changed with yeah. technology yeah. now you had to get on the technology of email mm-hmm. um, social media mm-hmm. And you're saying, oh, I don't really know that, so how am I going to get that done? Right. Right. This, like, how do you do that? And then the younger people behind you, that's what they know, so they're doing it. And they're mm-hmm. looking at you like, mm-hmm. oh, man, it's easy. What's the mm-hmm. problem? This, mm-hmm. I don't even sell tickets hand You still dropping off tickets? Yeah. Hand in hand? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I had to look in the mirror one day, okay, well, yeah. I guess I'm going to have to force my people to buy online. Yeah. And yeah. after getting over the hump and thinking about it and actually doing it, yeah. That's the best thing I could ever do. Yeah, you got to buy Because now, I don't have to drive to the Bronx, Brooklyn. Spinning gas. Right. All over Tyrons, the place. Right. Right. <laughs> Sorry, sitting there waiting for somebody to come. You know, and even if it's with two tickets. tickets yeah. That's what you did because yeah. you got to get the money in. You got to right. get the money in. You know, but Which now. Y'all made, y'all made a name for yourselves. Y'all had practically other people coming onto the trips promote y'all. Yep. Word of, word of mouth. Word of mouth. It's the best form. When people have a good time, man, mm-hmm. and they that, continue to tell somebody else. That person will tell somebody else. That was that customer them. service part. Yeah. Now, we had to bring extra comedians just to bring extra comedians. We did that. I mean, we would come up with different, you know, we had our um, pool party, champagne, mimosa, pool party we used to do all the time. We had a male female auction that talent would do that was, you know, and it wasn't, they didn't have to get naked. This one girl, she, I swear, she had on a turtleneck and her jeans. She did one two step, and she made almost nine hundred dollars. Wow. Okay. And it was just the way it flowed. The guys were going crazy, and all these things she had to do was sit down, have a drink with the guy. Nice. That was it. Nice. And it was just for the fun of it, you know. Like it was a fun thing to do. It got people talking, got people entertained. You know, that type of thing. And we kind of thought of it in town was great at that time. So it worked out. And then right after that, we would go right into our comedy show. What would you, um, before we close out, what would you say to a 25-year-old Tony Griffith? If you could go back in time, <laughs> what would you say to him? Now, that's a great question because I always say that. I would say to myself, stay with your main plan don't ever deviate because sometimes you can deviate because of personal goals personal things that happen in your life you know sometimes it goes well and sometimes it doesn't and that's sometimes when it's not going the way you want you sit there and you think well maybe it's not quite working like it's supposed to work for me right now you know and then there might be somebody in your ear saying the same well maybe you shouldn't do that maybe you should focus on this focus on this and sometimes you you're human, so you deviate when things go don't go well sometimes. But if I had stayed focused, who knows where I would have been by now. Not that I'm at a bad place, but I'm saying I would have retired. I wouldn't have did the 30 years. I probably would have did the 15. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. That's what I mean. So if you really have something that's going well, you got a good plan, you should study more and concentrate. Go even further. Go deeper into it. Don't pull back. Go what, further into what you're doing. What, what do you think is one of the biggest mistakes you made? in this business over the years? Listening to other people sometimes, yeah. I think that was. I'll tell you a particular moment. Um, we had partners, obviously, from other, say, promotional groups. 
So at my partners at the time, the this this group came over to me and said, "Look, we've been rocking with y'all for a couple of years. We want to go into a full partnership." Now I saw the numbers they were bringing in. I thought they were doing well, mm-hmm. but we started it yes, but that doesn't mean that's the way it always should stay, because if you keep it tight and local, it doesn't grow. So I felt like yeah, they should be a part of it because I think they earned it, and I saw the vision where they were coming from. The people at the time, my partners at the time, didn't see that. Now, not all of them are still with me. But there was one particular one who was like heavy against it. No, we don't want to share. You know, that type of attitude. You know, right. crabs in the barrel sometimes. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We here, they there, keep them where they are. And that particular group, this guy, and them, they blew up. They started doing international stuff. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I've done some All-Star weekends, some Super Bowl weekends, uh, Essence weekends, stuff like that. They started doing stuff like overseas early. Damn. And they were taking over the whole island just about wow. so not that I couldn't have but at that time it probably would have been us all working and doing that together gotcha so gotcha. sometimes you have to you gotta go with your gut gut which you know what you yeah. see what it is even if your current partners don't see it sometimes you gotta go out and go with that gut because if they like I say do the work they were doing the work gotcha they were doing the work mm-hmm. so they were following the steps so my gut was like it was right gotcha mm-hmm. So so what so what are some of the goals for you guys? What do you have coming up and tell everybody how they can find you? Okay. Our main goal at this point is to put our content, of course we have our content up on Fly T V, some of it. Okay. But we want to get all of our shows. Right now we have currently three shows up there. Right. Um by January I wanna have at least ten more. Mm-hmm. We have contracts with ten more people, but I like to have them up and all running on Fly T V and other formats by then. But our main goal is to spread all of this stuff that we have, our network to other um, streaming services, whether they be audio or visual. Okay. So those are our goals. And we want to take also the first group, because it's probably the easiest part that I know, which is the comedians, on the road to these first cities. But by the year, I want to bring them all through a total of maybe of 30 cities this particular year mm-hmm. and grow that way. That's the game plan. So, and when we go to each town, I want to go right to those uh, TV stations or street and present what we have to them and work out deals while we're there nice. and doing the shows as well. Mm-hmm. So those are the goals and see where we are by any year. How can the viewers In the 2021. Yeah. Right. In the 21. Okay. Oh, you can follow us right on Facebook, um, Griffin Icon, dot, Griffin Icon. Right on Facebook, we have a group you can join, and the website will be out shortly, which will be uh, griffinicon.com. Nice. Mm-hmm. Listen, it's been great having you. Yes. My pleasure, gentlemen. Fantastic. Appreciate you. Yeah. Learned a lot from you. Look forward to talking to you some more. That's right. Um, you know, you, you, you meet people for a reason. That's right. You make connections for a reason. And, um, you know, listen, it's another great episode. I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Joes. Yes, sir. We are back. We was on a little bit of hiatus. Yeah, COVID. I miss this though, Jack. Yeah, man. I miss the interviews. Yeah, but you know, it, 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 we back. We new and prove. Mm-hmm. As you can see, the studio look different. Mm-hmm. We got a fantastic guest. Mm-hmm. He's a family of this podcast. No doubt. You always welcome. No doubt. Um, this is your home. Mm-hmm. You got anything you're looking to promote. Yeah. Um, anything that's, that's happening that's new with you that you feel that our viewers will learn. And I'm sure it's probably anything. Mm-hmm. This is your home, man. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that, brother. And, and make sure you hit us up when you I'll, do some stuff. I'll all, be here. All we <laughs> ask for you, Tony G, is just to tag us. Oh, don't worry about it. I got you. I man. mean, social media. We talked. We sat here and just talked about social media. We got right. people that come here, and all we ask is just, just tag us. Yeah. I got you, brothers. Don't worry about it. I got so you. We and when we do all the back up, hey, listen, we got stuff we got to do. Black people always want something. Yeah. We'll make sure it happens. Like to take care of you. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's see what we can do when we get out there. Who knows? Maybe I'll have an event and you guys can do one of your shows there live. Oh, that's what I'm talking what I'm about. Talking. I would love to, man. I love doing I love going out and taking a show on the road and doing Damn, interviews. We got, we got our cameras these days, our phones. It's like all kinds of stuff. This technology these days. I take my little phone stand and stuff. We go out on interviews. We got the little thing. You just put your phone on. And it's not long. And these phones are these phones are amazing. That's, That's right. 
I'm gonna shout out my team, um, Alec Turner, Lukey Henderson, mm-hmm. my man DJ Control. Mm-hmm. These are real bosses. They yeah. work. I want you guys to meet them. Yeah, I man. want you to meet all the people in the Griffin Griffin Icon family. Love yeah. to. And love to. Listen, Love that's to. on. All right, yeah, man, it, I tell you that it's on like popcorn. <laughs> listen, another great episode. Conversations with Malik featuring Jeff Joe, yes, sir. Tony Griffin in the house. Griffin Icon. And, and we're in the show like we normally do. We love you, and ain't nothing you can do about it. Peace. Peace.